So let's say Rupesh has some X organization and he has make, uh, made a breakthrough in computer science and has some XYZ research. Okay. Now what Rupesh would do is, Rupesh would say that, hey, I would like to contribute to the community and give an open source version to everyone so that they can further develop on my research and uh, we all can grow together as a community. That's what Apache is. So what Facebook, I think, uh, Hadoop was created by either Hadoop was created by Yahoo, I guess. If I remember correctly, Hadoop was created by uh, okay, yeah, it was Google Pages, Google. So Hadoop was created by Google. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, Hadoop was created as a concept in as an internal tool by Google, and then Google open sourced it to uh, Apache, you can say. It would say that it was developed at the Apache Foundation in 2008. Yeah. So the thing is, if you will see, right, in 2003, it was developed at Google and then Google contributed to Apache software and gave them the open source version of Hadoop. Then once it was, uh, you can say, received by Apache Foundation, then Apache further developed on top of that as an open source community. And 2008 onwards, released a variant called Apache Hadoop. So Apache is nothing but Apache is an open source organization or foundation organization which build community. You can say open source software that basically provide as open source uh, releases. Anything, right? yes, yes. And I mean, there I, I don't even have the count how many software or open source version open source version of those software Apache has. Like over hundred, I can say something. Over hundred of softwares which are used in enterprise, uh, Apache has those. So when you talk about data lake, Apache has Kudi. You must be aware of Azure data lake and whatsoever. Yes, lake. yes, data lake. Yeah, yeah, you got it. But got then it. Apache. So I mean, name it. Uh, Apache has you. You must be aware of DataBricks. Apache has Apache Spark. You must be aware of Hadoop HD Insights in uh, Microsoft or Hortonworks or uh, Map MapR has another variant. Apache has Apache Hadoop. Uh, you must be aware. Of, yeah. So this I was created by I think if I'm correct, this was Facebook. Uh, I Big Table I think from yeah. No, no, it was. It, I'm pretty sure this was by Facebook. Yeah. I was created by Facebook then. Facebook contributed it to Apache later on. So Hive, then there is Pig, then there is whatnot. I mean, there are quite a lot of tools. I guess 20 tools were there in Hadoop ecosystem when I, I initially started working on that. But yeah. So I mean, yeah, Apache and Hadoop, the way they are related to each other is that Apache is a foundation. Hadoop is a tool, an open source tool by Apache, which anyone and everyone can use it and further modify on top of that. As per their convenience. Got it. Yeah. Any other questions? What is Cloud Era? Cloud Era. Cloud Era is another vendor. So there are different vendors of Hadoop. I'd say different vendors of Hadoop. So there is Cloud Era, Hortonworks, Pivotal, Microsoft, MapR, IBM. I've worked on this, this, this this not this oh, no actually this also not this these are the top six we win. so these so are what is the use of cloud era sorry a uh, cloud era is another organization cloud era is a company which has modified further hadoop for their uh, use so it's like there are some x number of features which will be there in cloud era hadoop which won't be there in apache hadoop and the rest of the versions and same goes for vice versa goes for all of these versions ibm will have certain features which will not be there in these then my mapr will have some microsoft will have some there will be some extensive feature to that particular vendor which will not be available in the other uh, vendors you can say or with can we can we think of cloud as a framework of hadoop or something no cloud is an organization cloud is an organization cloud is a company nothing else okay. is it a distribution it's not a distribution framework for uh, hadoop no, no, it's, it's, it's paid. It's not even free. 
I mean, there is a free version, the trial version. You can certainly download and use. Oh yeah. VM. But yeah, I mean, it's a company. If you ask me, what is Cloudera? Cloudera is a company. What is Cloudera Hadoop? It is Hadoop variant of Cloudera, which is further customized for their customers as per their requirement. And it will have certain feature which normal Apache Hadoop won't have, and the rest of the cloud, like other vendors that they have, they would they won't have those features. And similarly goes for those vendors which Cloudera won't have. But yeah, standard features will be common across all. So let's say Apache, but whatsoever you will be having in Apache Hadoop, all of these companies will have those features plus something else. There won't can be you can else. you uh, can you just uh, mention one or two differences between Cloudera Hadoop and some some other uh, vendors Hadoop like uh, maybe in Hive or something like that? They maybe yeah. Mm. All components is to processing big data. If you're asking this question, why not your learning that blah blah blah, and there is waste. I think okay. Cloudera site might have what is the difference between Apache and do no this one stack over should work. So, I mean, as such, they are not just, they're just mentioning that in terms of support and all specific tool, yeah, versus, like, tool wise difference, they are not giving. Yeah, like, now. like here, it's Cloudera versus Hortonworks, if you take, or Cloudera versus MapR uh, Hadoop, uh -huh. if you take. I think there yeah, may that, be... will have, certainly, that will have, yeah. certainly. Uh, Hortonworks. Mind Magics, okay. Oh, and I can ping this link in the chat. Right. Okay. Thanks. But yeah, I mean, essentially, they will all have Apache Hadoop at its core. All of the feature of Apache Hadoop, the open source one, and then they will have their own developers to. Yeah, I can see here features. in the in this uh, Cloudera comes with a sixty day free trial, and Hortonworks yeah. is completely free. So okay, got it. Like. Yeah. I mean, there are X number of things. This is just so, yeah. The users also, also, also that you can allocate maybe different or something. Yes, support wise is also different. Uh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Feature wise, we are, I I I'm pretty sure that there will be some features which won't be there. Okay. Yeah. Cloudera manager. There is no concept of manager here. Okay. So the Cloudera manager, I've used this. So yeah, it's much more easier. Uh, you can say UI friendly tool. You can just yeah. get a UI, pretty good, neat UI. Yeah, maybe like some, I heard about Hue or something in Cloudera, yes. right? Which, uh, which is, is a... a... But Hue is not a manager. Cloudera manager is a separate. Cloud, okay, right. Cloudera manager is a GUI tool and yes. basically has capability to control all the nodes. Yes. Start, okay. stop all the nodes. Correct. With the, the is is it Gita. like a yarn, yarn or something? Uh, Yarn is basically given in Ambari mostly, and okay. most of these will have Ambari for that GY purpose. Okay. But yeah, not Yarn. Right. Okay. Yep. These are all the different services of, I think, Hadoop, like Yarn, yes. Apache, Hive. Yes. These are the, you can, but we, the, the, you can say the technical term to call it, but we call it, call this as a Hadoop ecosystem. ecosystem so these are part of Hadoop ecosystem. Right. Yes. Okay. So these are different ecosystem components. Hive, Pig. Uh, Hue, HBase. Right. This uh, this Hadoop uh, uh, framework uh, does it collect data? Does it collect data, uh, big data, directly from the source of data generation? Or we need okay. to do something in front of other you know, management to get the data into Hadoop or something? Got it. I think I understood. Is it so, so? My question would be uh, more precisely: Is it is it is is it also work as a data management tool or something? No, it does not. Now, okay. Let me first let me take the first line, which I think Shri has question with, with respect to. Hadoop is an open source framework. So when we are saying that it is a framework, we are saying essentially 
that it is not like something something like uh, a tool that might you have used. Uh, take an example of Excel. So there is, uh, I mean, Hadoop is not like an Excel like software. It's not a software you can see, which you can just install and have some XYZ features and leverage it like that. The reason we are calling it is a framework is because it has certain components associated with it. And then further, depending upon your requirement, you can use this framework uh, and customize it as per your requirement as well. Uh, Sri Devi was it, I guess. Sri Devi, yeah, uh, yeah, was your question perfect? Yes, okay, yes, awesome. Yes. So this, that's why we are referring it to as a framework and not a software and not a tool. Although, I mean, tool people will say Hadoop is a tool. Actually, I will say that Hadoop is a big data processing tool. Okay. So, Generally, I, for my understanding, yeah, mm -hmm. what, what I can, uh, it's not a single uh, software or something like, mm -hmm. uh, like an Excel as you have given example, but correct. Framework consists of different, maybe two or different more components, components which yes. can be integrated and worked upon, right? Correct. And they can further scaled upon or scaled down or further customized, customized as per your requirement. Okay. Okay. Got it. A lot of customization and you can say a lot of things that need to be done from your end and are not available out of the box. And hence it is called as a framework and not a software. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that's answered, I guess. Now. I think Akshay asked me the question related to HDFS. Okay. So Hadoop is an open source framework comprising of multiple commodity hardware machines for processing business requirement. Now the key, key components of this particular definition is Hadoop itself, open source framework, multiple commodity hardware machine, business requirement, processing business requirement. These are the key components. I guess you, we all know what Hadoop is now open source framework. We know what is it? Multiple commodity hardware. Does everyone know what is what is a commodity hardware? Any doubts there? Perfect, no doubts. So we are good with that. Processing business requirement again, self-explanatory. That definition is done. Now, as a framework, what does Hadoop consist of? Is two major components. It says, and that is one is HDFS and one is MapReduce. Now, when we were talking about J Surya system, right? Initially, when we took example, what we said that. We were taking two things into consideration. One was storage, another one was compute. That is 2 TB of storage, 16 gigs of RAM. Correct? Here, that storage part, right? That is HDFS. We will be we're gonna data now. We are not gonna store data on a traditional storage device. Device would be actually the same, not the traditional storage file format or system. This time we'll be using HDFS system, Hadoop distributed file system. If you will go into your system as of now, as of today, right now, in your, if you are, if you've joined from your laptop, your system file system might be either NTFS or FAT32. FAT stands for file allocation table 32. I think FAT64 could be also there if you are using Windows 11 or latest Mac maybe. Uh, but yeah, mostly Windows people will be seeing that their uh, default file storage system would be NTFS. That is new table file system. I think NTFS stands for, give me a sec. Sorry. I forgot what T e stands for in NTFS. NTFS full form, new technology file system. Yeah. Something like that. New technology file system. So most of your system will either be NTFS file system based or FAT32 or 64. Uh, where are we here? Let's so this time, when we're talking about Hadoop, we will not be using our traditional file system that is NTFS or PAT. We'll be using HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. And for processing, we'll be using this framework, you can say again, MapReduce uh, for processing the data. Now, the way Hadoop Distributed File System is different than the uh, our, our NTFS or PAT32 is, it is an abstraction layer, you can say, on top of our traditional file system. And the way the reason I'm saying it is an uh, abstraction layer. If you remember, I took an example where three TB of data was big data for JSURIA system, correct? So in order to solve the problem, what I pitched here as a proposal was that I will bring in my system as well into consideration. And now JSURIA's in my system has four TB of space, two TB mine, two TB is, and now three TB is not a big data for us and we can simply store it. But 
again, if you will think right, the problem that we were having with the data mining capability, if you will store 1.5 TB on each of our system, then we will be having around 146 earlier, we were getting for 2 TB. So let's say 130 patterns from his system and 130 from mine. So 260 patterns, if we will get, then again, we will not be able to obtain, uh, you can say, a consistent pattern across that 3 TB of data and make it from unstructured to structured, uh, semi structured or structured, and we won't be able to use it. Again, the same problem persists. If I will pitch in even my system and store 1.5 TB on my and 1.5 TB on Jesuya system, everyone agree the problem still exist, e exist even if we take two systems into consideration and store half half on each system. Problem still exists. We won't be able to mine the data. We, are, we, will, we won't be able to find a pattern across the data consistently. Is there anyone who disagrees? No. Rupesh says no. I need two more no. To be on the same page, like everyone is understanding where I'm coming from and where I'm going. Shelja says no. One more no at least. J. Suya says no. Perfect. So now, <clears throat> in order to now leverage both of our system and find a consistent pattern across the three TV of data set, what I'll be using is I'll be using Hadoop distributed file system. Now, what this Hadoop distributed file system would do is it will be an abstraction layer uh, on both mine and his system, Jesuya system. And it will, and we will have one more system. Let's say now I will introduce one third system also to introduce some master slave architecture. So let's say there is a one master system which have only, let's say, just RAM. It does not, let's say, 100 MB of storage it has, and it has only RAM, let's say, 16 gigs of RAM, same as mine and Jesuya system, but it has storage of 100 MB. My has my system has like 2 TB, Jesuria system has 2 TB. Correct. Now, this HDFS, but it will add an abstraction layer on both of our system, and then the master system will act upon our system as a slave. And for master system, it will be like it is a consistent for him. HDFS, mine, and Jesuria system will have an HDFS space of 4 TB, and that will be treated as one single system for that master system. He will not differentiate between like this is Shubham system or this is Jesuya system. For him, there is an HDFS file system that exists in a master slave mode where he is master and our systems are slave. And he'll be able to recognize that seamlessly across uh, both the system that yes, 4 TB of HDFS space is available to me. And then that will give him, you can say, uh, one, one single single point of a single pane of glass to view the data. So for him, it is not two system. It is just one system that is having HDFS of 4 TB space. And using this kind of system, we can leverage further. You can say uh, distributed computing and commodity hardware at the same time together. Any question? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be question, but it's not that clear as of now. As you move on along with the slides, it will be much clearer. But what I'm trying to say here is that this HDFS will give you a uh, uh, you can say a layer of abstraction using which you can say that now I have 4 TB of space uh, in HDFS rather than saying that I have 2 TB of uh, NTFS space in two different systems. It will be acting as one single system of HDFS layer with 4 TB of space. That's what HDFS would be. And then MapReduce will further help us to process that data seamlessly uh, in, in, a, in a one single, you can say, Processing unit. That would uh, that's uh, that's what map reduce will do. Then <coughs> your page has okay. uh, Shubham one question. Yeah. Like uh, we have to configure SDFS, right? Yes. Uh, to use right. our community hardware as a SDFS uh, file system. Something. That's correct. Okay. Okay. That's correct. Simple. Think of it as it's like a Java runtime. You need to install Java runtime in all the machines if you want to make remote procedure call from one machine to the other via Java language or any other language. You need to both both the system need to have that language. I mean, I mean compiler or you can say interpreter installed on both the system. They must be talking to each other. So okay. the conditions conditions of the I mean the master slave architecture, yes, Surya mind system and another master architecture that master system that you are talking about. We all need to be connected with each other. At least master should be connected with both of us. Even if me and Jesuri are not talking, 
that's still we can do away with it. My system and GCD system is not talking to each other. That would still do. But master should be connected to both of our system so that he has access to both of the system and then can create and leverage this HDFS and MapReduce. So the connectivity is also a key aspect. Then MapReduce is uh, MapReduce process follow divide and conquer strategy that we discussed. In HDFS files are converted into blocks for storing and processing data. Correct. We will go into these details in the later slide. Any questions so far? Uh, Subham, like, I have one question. Like sure, what is uh, block processing? Uh, give me a sec. Yes, so block processing in the sense is, um, let's take another example. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Which I mean, who was it? Uh, this is Mithilesh. Mithilesh, yes. Uh, do you know specs of your computer or configuration of your computer? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yes. Uh, can you tell me which processor you are using? It is uh, i5 Intel. i5 Intel. How many cores? Or I need to check, not sure. No worries, okay, no worries. So what I was getting at it is, so I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the concept of uh, dual core, quad core, octa core, what does it stand for? So what happens is these cores are basically, you can say the standalone IO you can make up within a system at the same time, parallelly. So if you have a quad core system, Think of it as you have four different processors which can take four independent tasks simultaneously at the same time in parallel. If you have octa core, you can take up eight different. Yeah. Like you can. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Correct. Now, yeah. what would happen is the way HDFS you can leverage on a standalone system also. Uh, I mean, traditionally, if you process any file which is of one GB, what will happen is it will start getting processed serially. Like it will start reading from the first line and it will move one by one, one by one, one by one to the millionth line, which will be the end of the one GB file. This process is serial and it will take time. Whereas what would HDFS do on the same machine? We, I'm not talking about two system. I'm not talking about master slave architecture on the same machine I'm talking about. And you have created Hadoop uh, system in a standalone mode. We call this independent system of Hadoop call it, uh, is what we refer as standalone mode. So you have created an Hadoop instance in a standalone mode. And what HDFS would do is, as part of its framework, it will create, basically, you can say, split your 1 GB file into multiple blocks. By default, the block size is 64 MB. We will study in the later slides, it will be written somewhere. Okay. By default, it is in 64 MB, but you can configure it as per your convenience. Right now, for our convenience, but we will take it, uh, I mean, for this example, what we will do is we will take it as a 256 MB block. So 256 MB block of 1 GB file size, will be, there will be four blocks, correct? Of correct. Yeah. Now I'm assuming that your system is quad core. Since you are using i5, I think i5 onwards, quad core generation started. So your system is quad core, that is four cores are there. So what this HDFS would do, it, it will create four blocks of 256 MB each and it will assign to one core at the same time. Now your data will one GB of file will get processed in one fourth of the time as compared to the traditional system that you had, where you were processing one GB file serially on a single core, or maybe even you were utilizing two cores, but it was still executing serially and not parallelly. Okay. Okay. So that's how HDFS gives you an edge that it internally converts all the data into blocks, so that you can further parallelly operate upon or process those data set and then leverage HDFS and reduce your processing time by many folds. The reason I'm talk, saying many folds this time because it depends on the number of commodity hardwares you have, on the number of cores those, those hardwares might have and what is your maximum parallel execution or threading capability of your system is. So there is a, I'm not sure uh, how, I mean, I would like to give you this exercise. Just try to check specs of your computer. So your computer does not have multi cores, it have multi multi threading capability. And nowadays system have even 64 threads, 128 threads parallel execution. So these 128 thread means you can 
process such 128 MB 128 blocks parallelly within your system by creating 128 threads at the same time and assign each thread to one thread executor and then with those all of those threads will be executed parallelly and it will de basically decrease your time by 128 for your processing time because in a traditional system one thread is created and that will execute your all of your operations serially okay 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 yeah. so that's okay. why the, the, yeah that's how this blocks thing in, comes into consideration and it makes parallel execution or distributed file computing processing easy and that, that's how we can leverage our uh, multi-core multi-threaded process you can say cpu capability capabilities uh, traditionally if you if you talk about not hadoop and just the distributed file system i'm not sure how many of you have coded in java so java and even python provide creating multi-thread multi-threading processes so that you create a thread pool and then uh, uh, you you can assign those thread pool to different you can say thread executors or cores uh, within your system and then execute them parallelly that's how your traditional uh, distributed file system would work but hadoop provides this via uh, this open source framework out of the box as a capability and you don't have to do anything you you just need to set uh, how many of you are aware of yaml file y a m l file yaml configuration file correct correct i think shridevi said configuration so it's a configuration file generally which we use in our today's world for devops or any other like config config purposes it's a json based uh, standard now you, we can say industry standard used for configuration so i think here also we have yaml and one other option for config where you can set the configs and in that configuration you can set your block size by default 64 mb and then you can create bigger block size but you I mean, I'll, I'll tell you why a bigger block size is not good and why you should stick to a, a smaller block size, but not too small. Again, not too small is also not good. We will go into those discussions later. But yeah, you just need to set up the config there of your block size and then automatically HDFS framework will take care of that. That all of your data which you are loading onto a Adobe distributed file system will get converted into those many blocks of those size actually. To those. 